All right, hi Hello. everyone. Welcome back to Doula Date Live. I'm Madison Hobbs. And I'm Jen Suzuki. And today we're gonna to be talking about standard procedures for mom and baby immediately following birth. Yeah. So I think we're gonna start talking about um, the first two hours after birth because that's a really mm -hmm. important yeah. time for both mom and baby. It's often referred to as the golden hour, that mm -hmm. first hour. Sometimes we like to extend it to two yeah. before you know you get moved from delivery to postpartum. It's a it's a really important time for bonding, breastfeeding, um, and for that transition from womb to world. Yeah. And so one thing I want to say before we get started is that all the information we're going to share today is not to convince you on whether you should or shouldn't do any of these procedures. We just want to talk about what's typically done standard and give you, let you know that you have options. Mm -hmm. if, if there's something that you hear and go, hmm, I don't know that that really works for our family, just so that you know you have options if you want yeah. them. And take what we say and do your own research. I encourage you on all these topics we're gonna to talk about, vitamin K shot, erythromycin, ointment in the eyes, delayed bathing. Take the information and search really hard for both ends of the spectrum. So if you know you sit on one end or the other, look up both. Give yourself both arguments so that there's no bias in choosing what's best for you and your family. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the uh, vitamin K and the okay. erythmus. You want Arith to do this one? I can't say it. The vitamin I'm not even erythromycin. Try. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can say it. Um, so vitamin K is typically an injection given to baby right after birth. Um, the idea behind it is that baby's not born with um, a lot of clotting factors. Mm -hmm. And so this typically started when forcep deliveries were really common and it was given to baby to help prevent bleeding in, in the brain due to head trauma that may occur during labor. And so that's still often given, it's now offered orally as well as an injection. Um, but what I read on the oral was that the studies were inconclusive as to whether it actually helps prevent excessive bleeding. Mm. But that is an option if you're concerned about the injection portion of it. But that is something that they do in the hospital immediately after birth to help prevent any bleeding internally for yeah. baby following <clears throat> delivery. <Yeah. laughs> and the only downsides to the vitamin K, there's arguments it's super beneficial if you're worried about um, bleeding your baby or any trauma mm -hmm. and it's just a sub Q injection there's a little bit of pain and crying in the thigh where they give it but you might want to do your own research on what is in the vitamin K shot and some of the controversy on looking at it as another in intervention um, or what exactly you're putting in your baby your baby just was born so do your own research make your own decision but just know that vitamin K is something in Kansas and in Missouri where you can accept or refuse so yes. that is your choice yes. and next I think we'll touch on erythromycin ointment so standard procedure when baby's born in a hospital if you're in a birth center it's it's usually you're asked if you would like to have it and then home birth it's probably the same thing so after baby's born they like to protect baby's eyes from worst case scenario going blind if baby's faced with um, conjunctivitis eye infection, so it's like pink eye in the newborn. <laughs> in a hospital environment, bacteria are rampant and, and things are a little bit different there, mm -hmm. so that might be something to be concerned about, but really the evidence states that the only reason it is a mandatory intervention is mom has um, syphilis or gonorrhea or chlamydia, any STD, I yes. think there's two of them in the literature they only really talk about. Do you remember which? The only one I that I read about was gonorrhea and chlamydia. So yeah. if that's an infection that you have struggled with in the past, then the erythromycin ointment probably is definitely something yes. you want to include. That's but true. on the other end of the spectrum, if you and your partner both know you are free and clear of, of those disease processes, then it might be something to look at as do you want the first thing on your baby's eyes to be an antibiotic? So do your own research, find out what is best for you and your family, and make a decision that you feel really supported and strong in. And the Absolutely. biggest reason we're doing this video is because a lot of our clients, when we bring up, we talk about um, postnatal interventions, baby's just born, do you wanna do this? Do you wanna do this? How do you wanna structure the, those first two golden hours after birth? And a lot of our moms are super educated and they're like, wait, like what that is. They're not sure what this is or they didn't even know they had the option to yeah. um, 
accept or decline these interventions so yeah yeah and and a lot of these can be delayed as well until mm -hmm. later especially the arithmetic I swear I can say it. <laughs> the eye gel. <laughs> it can be delayed until mm -hmm. after those two golden hours mm -hmm. so that baby can still see because newborns can't mm -hmm. see. Immediately after birth, you know, it's not going to be as crystal, crystal clear as your vision and my mm -hmm. vision, but babies can see, um, especially when they're, they're directly on your chest. And so if you want to delay that, you yeah. still think that it's beneficial to baby to have that, you can delay it until afterwards so that you can still have that bonding time and that, that mm -hmm. eye contact and have baby be able to yeah, see your point. face and, um, you know, watch your baby, you know, maybe breastfeed for the first time or, yeah. or meet dad for the first time. And, and to actually have that experience, it's something that can be delayed if you do choose mm -hmm. to have the gel. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so another topic that we want to touch on is once baby's born, if baby's stable, there's no concerns with mom, baby, anybody in the delivery room, <clears throat> these first two hours, any cares that baby needs, so checking baby's vitals, the respirations, the heart rate, the temperature, all those cares can be done with baby on mom's chest. Yes. So. If you're really eager to get a weight and a measurement and baby taken away to the warmer, but ideally baby should stay on mom's chest for the first hour. Mm -hmm. And then the second hour, ideally skin to skin time with dad. And those first two hours after birth are going to be essentially the only two hours you have the three of you. So if it's your first baby or if you have other siblings waiting to meet their new sibling at home, it will be the only time it's the three of you. And usually your doula is there for about an hour maybe two hours uh, postpartum. So that is something to think about <clears throat> that those might be the only two hours and having baby there on your chest and just enjoying that time. And if there's any problems, of course, baby can be taken to the warmer, but you can delay the weight and the height and anything that Nearly you're... everything can be mm -hmm. delayed. Um, you know, especially if baby is healthy and stable, um, the initial APGAR seems good. Um, it's a test they do to make sure that, that baby tests a different, couple of different things, skin color, breathing, all that, yeah. to make sure that baby's doing okay. As long as everything looks normal and baby's healthy, mm -hmm. there's hardly anything that can't be delayed yeah. for two hours, especially the height and the weight, footprints, mm -hmm. all that. Not a whole lot is yeah. gonna change in two hours. Yeah. But those two hours are critical for bonding, breastfeeding, um, temperature regulation. Mm -hmm. um, mom's breasts are so powerful to regulate baby's temperature. Mm -hmm. So mom's much better. Milk production, stimulating that, having baby yes. latch right away. It is totally normal for a newborn to be rooting and latching right after birth. Mm -hmm. yes. And you want that for mom's milk supply. The early stimulation, the better. Yeah, so that's why we encourage moms and babies in that first hour especially to mm -hmm. spend that whole hour skin to skin, um, encouraging breastfeeding if that's mm -hmm. your, your feeding option, um, regulating that temperature and just getting that bonding time. I mean, just mm -hmm. being able to look at this baby that has been growing inside you for nine mm -hmm. months, it's it's a beautiful time that yeah. you, you know you might not want baby to go yeah. anywhere anytime soon and, and he doesn't necessarily have to. And the providers and the NICU staff um, or if you're a birth center or home birth, that's normal. They're used to that and they're used to obliging to mom's request to do all necessary cares and it's it's no issue and um, yeah. they work around you nursing and holding just fine so Absolutely. that's if your baby's healthy and stable but most babies are after yes. birth so think about that enjoy those um two hours and then usually you'll be moved to a postpartum floor and that's a really great time as you're getting packed up and ready to go that baby is in the warmer and getting everything done by the NICU mm -hmm. staff or even when you get to the postpartum room yeah exactly yeah. or maybe you want to take your first nap Yes, post-delivery, post, post delivery, which you'll be tired. Yeah. It's a good time for, for baby to go get evaluated and spend some special time with dad and mm -hmm. let you get rest. Or maybe dad wants to rest too and, yeah. and all of that. Um, so another thing that, that happens right after delivery is cord clamping. Mm -hmm. um, so when baby comes out, still attach the umbilical cord to the placenta. The placenta is delivered after baby is. And so typically what's standard in a lot of hospitals is for the cord to be clamped immediately before the placenta is fully delivered. Mm -hmm. um, but research shows that not all of the blood from the placenta goes through the cord into baby until approximately 30 minutes to an hour after birth. Mm -hmm. And so one option that you can request and talk to your doctor about is delayed cord clamping. And so not clamping that cord until after the placenta is delivered until after the cord stops pulsing to make sure that baby gets 
the full blood volume that he had inside the womb is mm -hmm. now outside. And most providers ask dad if, if he's going to cut the cord or support person. Mm -hmm. So if that's something that you could discuss with your support person or dad, whoever's in the room, and say, okay, when you cut the cord, just make sure that it's been delayed, it's been yes. a couple minutes, and that you ask the provider, has all the blood flow been given from the placenta? So yeah. you oftentimes have a lot of control over when that happens. Yes, definitely. Um, <clears throat> and you know, because it's so standard, a lot of times in hospitals, sometimes you you know you have that doula there to hold that yeah. space and yeah. and if you notice that maybe the the provider it's so standard that they just cut it you know when you wanted your partner there then the doula is watching like, <laughs> yes the doula is watching and be like hey dad weren't you gonna cut the cord and yeah and hold that space for those conversations didn't you want the the cord to be delayed and yeah. and it kind of takes that attention back to you and your needs and yeah. and away from what's about to happen yeah. down at the cord. Um, so that's another thing. Perfect. Let's see. Yeah. First bath. Yes, the first bath. So which, delayed bathing. <laughs> yes, delayed bathing. We love delaying everything. We think <laughs> that babies come out perfect, yes, right? Yes, um, so another thing that is typically standard in the hospital is to clean baby, give give him or her their first bath. Um, you know, baby comes out all in, in birth mucus and, and goop and vernix. And, and vernix Sometimes and, meconium. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You can go ahead and wipe that. Of course, so if, when the APGAR score is being taken, baby's been stimulated, warmed, and dried. So face and head are getting wiped off, yes. but we're talking about like baby gets taken away, they're using, you know, either putting baby under running warm water or in the warmer, they're using bath wipes and mm -hmm. different methods to bathe baby. Yeah, rather than just a, a dry cloth to, to kind of wipe everything mm -hmm. away, um, this is an actual, you know, it could even be a submersion bath where they know got a whole tub full of water I've seen that before in hospitals um, and so that's something that we would definitely encourage you to research about what baby is delivered with the the vernix mm -hmm. sometimes babies are born with um, lanugo which is a little bit of hair and things like that that you know may be affected by the first bath that maybe you prefer to come off naturally um, and these barriers that baby are you know absorbs on their skin through yes. the birth canal. There are barriers so that baby's first line of defense. It's their immune system on the, on the outside. And as baby's nursing, they're developing their colonization and immune system on the inside. So some of these <clears throat> things that they're born with on their skin that we might think are gross or dirty, they're actually protection, and especially in a hospital environment that can be yes. really beneficial to your baby. And your baby's swaddled. You're the only one or dad holding baby skin to skin. Maybe grandparents, and if, and if they're not comfortable with that until babies have their first bath, then well, it's just okay. you and your baby. That's from your body. Yeah. So just having baby wiped off, that's totally fine. But using soap and water and completely stripping away that first line of defense is where, yeah, something to think about. And yeah. if you're not comfortable with holding your baby until the first bath, then that's your Absolutely. decision too. Yeah. yeah. And there's Absolutely. nothing. There's no shame in that. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, babies born with, you know, there's blood that comes when baby's born and, and sometimes that dries on the skin and isn't easily wiped off. And, and I know a lot of people are uncomfortable with mm -hmm. blood. And so that's another thing that yeah. e bathing baby immediately is not detrimental. Absolutely not. And, and if you definitely want baby clean, then clean baby. Yeah. Um, okay. We just encourage that that is the first line of defense. And there are things that baby's born with, like the vernix, that's going to strengthen the immune system. And, and babies are oftentimes born with really thin or sensitive skin. And sometimes as gentle as baby soaps are and as gentle as those nurses are that are going to be cleaning babies, sometimes it can still be irritating mm -hmm. or can, can cause scratches. And and that's that's something to think about as well is, you know, is, is it worth potentially irritating the skin? Right things like that so yeah what's our last one do you think let's see maybe the the hepatitis because i think we touched everything sure. right? yeah, like all yeah. that. um so another another um injection that they typically um, bring up around birth is the hepatitis vaccine um from what i've read that is mandatory in the state of kansas mm -hmm. Again, with all vaccines, that's something that you can talk to your doctor if it's something that makes you uncomfortable. Um, 
but that is the hepatitis can either be started immediately at birth or at the two month checkup. Mm -hmm. So that's something to do research on, especially if vaccines are something that you're not comfortable with or something that, that makes your family a little uncomfortable. You're still forming your opinion on them as a parent because you have to take in a lot of information and a lot of choices and I can't mm -hmm. say I envy parents to have to decide. <laughs> um, there's, you can message us. We have a lot of good resources on either side of the vaccination yes. spectrum because what works for us is not going to work for your family. Exactly. And a doula's role is to support you no matter what. And so sometimes there are doulas out there who um, have personal convictions that are so strong they aren't able to support families on either end of the spectrum when it yeah. comes to, to vaccines or, or, or any interventions or anything parenting wise. There, there are those doulas and, and we have to respect that. Um, but most of us are able to support your decisions mm -hmm. no matter what, whether you choose to vaccinate or not, no matter what our personal convictions mm -hmm. are, we're there to support you. Your doula should inform you on both advice. Yes. She, she should give you all the information and then help you navigate to a decision you feel comfortable and confident in. Yes, she should never pressure you into a decision, mm -hmm. especially not one that you're uncomfortable with. Um, so, so that yeah. hepatitis one is, is something that, that gets started immediately at birth yeah. along with the you can delay it. And you can delay it. Yeah. Um, the first dose can be delayed for at least two mm -hmm. months. And if that's something that you're still not comfortable with at two months, definitely talk to your doctor about yeah. potentially having another altered schedule or what that might look yeah. like so. with your provider. I think we touched on everything. We will definitely so. be getting together again to do another doula date live. Yes. So if you have questions, comments, concerns, or topics that you'd like to see discussed, that's how we get our topics to talk Absolutely. about um, from you guys. So mamas and ladies and friends, just go ahead and drop those in the comments or send us a message and we will let you know when the next one's coming up. All right. Okay.